and he started asking me about exhibiting and how I do that and all that and I told him he said it's very competitive when you're in high school it's easy to impress high school students but when you get out of here it's a whole nother animal but he really hadn't experienced a lot of failure in his life and I said you have to be pre prepared, prepared for being rejected and he said, oh, no problem, I can do it. So he found out about an exhibition. He applied to it. We photographed the work. We did a nice job with that. Went through the whole process and wrote a statement. And he did everything he could, but he was rejected. And he was devastated by this rejection. He was completely wiped out. He came in, he even looked different the way he walked. <laughs> <laughs> and he told me right away that he had been rejected. And I, I said, you know, that, that's part of this. Well, he really wasn't prepared for it, even though I had mentioned that. And so he wanted to apply again, thinking that that was just a fluke. And the second time he was rejected as well. Oh. <laughs> so, and I kept telling him that you just, perseverance is really the most important thing with the arts, with anything really. Yeah, really. And so he tried it again the third time and was rejected again. And took a little bit of a pause, wanted to improve his work a little bit, and he was rejected a fourth time. Wow. Uh, wait, but, I'm sorry. So, so what was this that he was, all, what was, this that he was applying to again? Okay. exhibitions. Okay. All right. But his perception is because he's been told he's really good here, and probably his whole life, like many people, young people, they have a hard time with rejection with failure. And yesterday, the this stu this same student came in after his fourth rejection, and he did seem a little bit better about it. Yeah. And I said, look, I've got a whole folder of rejections. I said, I even, over spring break, put them in order of graduate schools I was rejected to, and exhibitions and employment and he, he was really kind of surprised by that that I would keep those and I said well it it's kind of nice to reflect on that and I said when I looked at some of those like the employment ones I realized that had I gotten those jobs I wouldn't have had this opportunity at Glen Book South and this turned out to be an extraordinary opportunity but my path wasn't this straight path like I think so many students think that journey's going to be just this you get out of school and you get a good job and you move to a really good suburb and, and everything's happy but what I told him and I believe this is that that doesn't necessarily make you a more interesting person or have a story sometimes that meandering is okay and it oftentimes really brings great discovery and it certainly has in my life. One other really quick question. I mean, we've been talking about in school, I know you also have kids. I mean, is this the way that you tried to raise your own kids? I mean, because I find sometimes, like what I say in class, I always stop and think like, well, okay, I have two kids. And are the things that I am telling my students, you know, are these the same things that I make sure to, you know, tell my own kids about being prepared for failure and being uh, um, okay with uh, rejection, learning to embrace that, and yeah, I mean, it. You know, 
that is one of the biggest complexities for me in raising children and also when I reflect about my teaching and being a father being a, a parent I it and I remember Jeff Yorty and I used to talk about this and I, I believe that I the way I teach in a lot of ways, I wish my own children could be in my class <laughs> <I don't> because <laughs> they, they would be almost like a captive audience like my right. students are, right. where children, my children, were always so scattered that the timing wasn't always right to yeah. talk about these more serious things when I would only see them for 20 minutes when we ate supper right. together. Right, yeah. But when I have a semester where some days they're not ready to listen and then other days I'm saying these things and these and so many of my students seem to really pick up on my philosophy and the way I see things um, so that poses a challenge so um, one of one of the things that I think I didn't do well with with my own kids was that that I probably told them they were smart too much. One of the things as a parent I wanted to do was to, and my wife I believe was the same, to move our children to a better school district than where we were. Yeah. We were living in Elgin, which was where I grew up. And Elgin's rough. It, it is. And so we started with my daughter in kindergarten. It was a bilingual school. And she was learning Spanish. And we moved her from that to Palatine, where it was, it was a, a, almost a safer situation. Mm -hmm. The, the school was ranked higher and all that kind of stuff and it was a little bit safer area but where I grew up it was rough that really made me I believe a better person and I feel like I've kind of denied my own kids that that roughness and I've made them less I guess less wrong in a way hmm. I, I don't I don't yeah, know if that's I, okay. the right way to describe it but but they've had less to encounter to have to problem solve to be able to solve their problems and move right. on and that's dealing with people varieties right. of people personalities right all of those kinds of things Kurt Webb, <laughs> artist, educator, parent, thinker, great guy. Failure <laughs> and fa failure, <laughs> failure, right? And also successful person. <laughs> Thank you for this conversation, man. It's been great. Thank you, Scott. <laughs>